when it comes to propane systems and stuff like that, you would think that I know a little bit about it since I do tips and things like that on this channel and I had something happen to me. So try to guess which one of the eight that it is and leave it down in the comments below. The first suggestion is checking your propane levels. On mine, I have two 30 pound tanks. And that means that every now and then I need to get them filled up. So if I have one that's empty, I'll switch to the other one and come back and use the other 30 pound tank. That means that I need to fill the empty one. So you need to check every now and then to make sure that you haven't ran out of propane. If you check out this video right here, it'll show you a method of which you can check yours even if you're out and about. That leads me to number two. That is checking your selector switch. So on my propane system on my RV, I have a manual selector. It has a little arrow on it, and it has a green or red, green meaning that I'm getting propane from the propane tank. So I'll go to that selector switch, and I'll turn it and point it at the propane tank that I want to use. Now on your RV, you may have an auto selector. You can still see on there which side you're picking from, but nevertheless, make sure that the selector switch is pointing at the tank that you're going to be using. All right, suggestion number three. If you're going to want to use propane, then make sure you turn the tank on. You go outside, you turn the little valve on top of the propane tank to allow propane to start to move. As we stated before, once you have the selector switch pointed at the tank that you want, turn that tank on, turn the other one back off, and that way you know that you're pulling propane from the side that you want. Number four. This suggestion is about bleeding out the system. So if you change your tanks or you get them full or anything like that and you turn them on, you're not necessarily going to have propane at whatever you're going to use it on right then. So what you can do is go to your oven. What you're going to do there is go and try to start the oven up. To do that, you're going to select which burner that you want and you're going to hold it in and turn the gas on and then you're going to try to ignite it. If you don't get a flame right away, then that means that you have air in the system. So patience here is key. Keep holding it down and keep hitting that igniter until you get a flame. Once you get a flame, go ahead and let it run for a little while. The reason you're gonna do that is to let any of the existing air move out. My suggestion here is to let it run about 30 to 45 seconds. That way you know you have all the air out of the line. The next one has to do with safety measures. On your RV, you'll have a carbon monoxide slash propane gas detector. This detector is there for that very purpose. It detects if you have any gas leaks. If you have any gas leaks in your RV, that's not good. So check to make sure that that is working. On mine, I have a light on there to let me know that it's okay. Also has a test button on there. I could push on the test button and it'll give a really, really loud alarm. And that lets me know that it's working. The next tip has to do with those leaks. Say your detector's not working and you come inside of your RV and you smell something that just ain't right. See, a lot of people don't know that when it comes to propane that the manufacturers actually put stuff inside of the propane so that it doesn't smell good. So if you have a propane leak inside of your RV, I would suggest going outside of your RV and shutting off the propane tanks completely right then and there. Some people might think that it's a good idea to go ahead and disconnect power so that you don't have anything trying to start. Not necessarily the case right away. What you wanna do is open up all your doors, get some air flowing through there, get that propane out of your RV. See, the reason I say about the electrical part and having something trying to start, you have a multiple types of different systems inside of your RV, 12 volt and 110 volt. If you have those two things, then you gotta find a way to shut all that off right away. Disconnecting your battery, turning off switches, everything like that. So when it comes to turning off the power and flipping switches and disconnecting batteries, 12 volt, 120 volt systems and all that stuff, you have a chance of creating a spark. So you can only imagine you have propane inside of your RV and you go to turn stuff off and you create a spark. Spark, propane inside of the RV, well, you can imagine what would happen there. Not a good scenario. So my suggestion is, is that if you have that smell inside of your RV, is to go out, turn off the propane, open up all the doors, the windows, and stuff like that, and get some air moving through the RV so that you can dissipate whatever is inside. 
All right, the next tip has to do with checking for leaks. What we're gonna talk about is you have actual leaks at the fittings. It is a very important that every couple of months you go out and you check all the fittings outside of your RV, under your RV, and inside of the RV, wherever you have propane connections. Now you say, how do you check for leaks at any one of these fittings? You go and you get a spray bottle and you fill it up with soapy water. After you verify that your propane system is good, right? Your oven is working and all the other things inside of your RV is getting propane. Once you have all that checked and you're good to go, you'll want to go to each one of the fittings and spray some of that soapy water on top of each one of the fittings or around each one of the fittings. If any one of the fittings has a leak, you'll start to see bubbles forming around that fitting. If you do have a fitting that has leaks, go back to your tanks and turn them off. Get your propane completely empty so that you don't have any leaks at any of those points anymore. Once you have the propane system shut down, consult a professional to get any of those fittings taken care of. Now, if you're handy enough and you wanna to try to take care of it yourself, go ahead and do so. But my suggestion is if you don't really know what you're doing around your propane system, now this is important because you don't want to turn yourself into something that is gonna cause a big issue. So what you wanna do is contact a professional, ask them to come out and check your RV and fix those fittings. Believe me, propane is not something that you want to mess with inside of your RV. Now, just like everything else on your RV, there should be some point of maintenance and some sort of timeline that you need to check things. This goes into the annual check. It's good to annually check all your systems, your oven, your refrigerator, and all the different things that uses propane. You want to check those systems out. And not only do you want to make sure that all the appliances work, but you want to make sure that there's no leaks at those appliances also. So what I suggest is that you take your RV in once a year and have it professionally checked out. Now for me, I have to take mine in once a year to have a state inspection done. When I do that, I can ask the facility then if they'll go ahead and check my propane systems out to make sure that everything is good to go. Again, propane is not something to mess with in your RV, especially if you have problems. If you have problems, shut it down, turn it off, and get help. As I said in the beginning of the video, one of these different steps is something that happened to me. I didn't think it through straight, and I had an episode where I didn't get propane to my RV. So take a guess at which one it was and leave down in the description below which one you thought it was. And until the next time, enjoy your trips, keep your propane safe, and God bless.